Welcome to the Awakening Black Women United. I am your host, Sherry Danny. Subscribe, like, share, comment, and hit the notification bell so you know every time I upload a video. Let's talk about religion and sexual suppression. God doesn't want you to get laid. Why? God imposed patriarchy and marriage on women called their children bastards and did not allow women to have as many sex partners as they wished. Ever pondered how religion and sexuality intersect and influence each other? It's a delicate dance, a complex interplay that has been a source of contention and unease for centuries. Let's delve into it together. Religion and sexuality. Two potent forces that shape our identities, our societies, and our worldviews. Yet their relationship is often fraught with tension, misunderstanding, and unfortunately, discrimination. For many religious traditions, sexuality is viewed through a cisgender, heteronormative lens, often leading to a dissonance for those who identify outside of these parameters. Let's consider the typical religious perspective on sexuality and gender. Notice the quotation marks around typical. That's because while there are common views, a plethora of variety exists among religions, their practitioners, and their institutions. Some religions, like Christianity, view sex as a sacred act reserved for marriage between a man and a woman. Others, like Hinduism, see it as a natural and normal part of life. Still others, like Islam, have a nuanced view of sex and sexuality, perceiving them as both natural and normal parts of life, but also instrumental for procreation between husband and wife to avoid sin. Regardless of the religion, there are often stringent guidelines about sex, sexuality, and gender. Many religions believe that premarital sex and sex outside of marriage is sinful. Rules about who you can have sex with are often quite strict too. Many major religions forbid same-sex or same-gender relationships and subscribe to an exclusively gender-binary narrative. So while there's no one-size-fits-all answer to the question of how religions view sex, sexuality, and gender expression, it is safe to say that it's often a taboo subject. Religion seems to be preoccupied with proper sexual behavior, and those who deviate from the norm often find themselves marginalized. But why is this the case? Why is there such a disconnect between religion and sexuality? That's what we'll explore in our next scene. While there's no universal answer to how religions perceive sex, sexuality, and gender, it's clear that it's often seen as a complex and taboo subject. What does typical mean when we talk about religion's perspective on sexuality and gender? Now that's a loaded question, isn't it? Let's try to unpack it a bit. Religion and sexuality have a long and complex history. In many conservative religious circles, sex is viewed as a sacred act reserved for a heterosexual cisgender marriage. But before we paint all religions with the same brush, it's important to remember that there's a wide spectrum of beliefs and practices. For instance, in Christianity, sex is often seen as something sacred, meant for a man and a woman within the confines of marriage. Hinduism, on the other hand, generally views sex as a natural and normal part of life. Then there's Islam, which has a nuanced perspective, seeing sex as both a natural part of existence and a means of procreation within marital bonds. But, across the board, these viewpoints are dominated by cisgender and heteronormative narratives. In the majority of religions, there are strict guidelines about sex, sexuality, and gender. Premarital sex is often considered sinful, and sex outside of marriage even more so. Many religions also have stringent rules about who you can have sex with often forbidding same-sex or same-gendered relationships, and promoting a strictly binary narrative of gender. Despite the diversity in religious practices and beliefs, it's safe to say that sex, sexuality, and gender are often seen as taboo subjects. Religions seem to be preoccupied with proper sexual behavior. This focus on sexuality could be related to its role in facilitating long-term mating strategies. Being religious might serve as a social signal of faithfulness and a desire for long-term commitment. For those growing up in rigid religious environments, this can lead to delayed sexual development and a deep-seated mistrust of one's own sexual desires. The fear that natural sexual urges could lead to eternal damnation can cause significant internal conflict. In religions like Christianity, which often view sexual desires as sinful, this can lead to a constant sense of guilt and anxiety. Even in Buddhism, where the Buddha insisted on celibacy for monks and nuns to avoid worldly attachments, sex is seen as an obstacle to mental concentration. So, what does typical mean when we talk about religion's perspective on sexuality and gender? It's a mix of a lot of things, societal norms, individual interpretations, and centuries-old traditions. 
But one thing's for sure. Religion often seems preoccupied with proper sexual behavior, but the reasons behind this vary. Welcome to The Awakening, Black Women United. I am your host, Sherry Danny. Subscribe, like, share, comment, and hit the notification bell so you know every time I upload a video. Let's talk about religion and sexual suppression. God doesn't want you to get laid, why? God imposed patriarchy and marriage on women called their children bastards and did not allow women to have as many sex partners as they wished. How do these religious views impact individuals, particularly those from the LGBTQIA community? The effects can be, and often are, profound. These rigid views on sexuality and gender, which are deeply ingrained in many religious teachings, can lead to a host of negative feelings and experiences. For some, it can cause internal conflict, as they grapple with their innate feelings and desires, and the teachings of their faith that label these feelings as sinful or wrong. This can lead to repression, where individuals feel they must hide or deny their true selves in order to conform to religious expectations. Alongside this repression, there's often a heavy weight of anxiety, the fear of being found out, of being ostracized or condemned by their religious community can be a constant source of stress. This can be especially true for individuals who identify as LGBTQIA+, as many religious doctrines explicitly label same-sex relationships and non-binary genders as sinful. This anxiety can be compounded by a sense of guilt. If you've been taught that your feelings, your desires, your very identity is a sin, it's all too easy to internalize that message. You start to see yourself as flawed, as wrong, as sinful. This can lead to feelings of self-loathing and shame, which can be incredibly damaging to an individual's mental health. For members of the LGBTQIA community, these impacts can be even more severe. They often face not just internal conflict, but external rejection and condemnation as well. They may be shunned by their religious community, rejected by their families, and subjected to discriminatory practices. This can lead to isolation, depression, and in some tragic cases, even suicide. The impact of these religious views can be profound and damaging, particularly for those who are part of the LGBTQIA community. But it's important to remember that change is possible, that acceptance and understanding can be fostered, and that every individual, regardless of their sexuality or gender identity, has the right to love and be loved without fear or shame. Religions are not monoliths. How do perspectives on sexuality and gender differ within a single religion? Let's dive into this thought. It's true that many religions have a general doctrine or set of beliefs that they promote. However, within these religions, there is often a wide range of perspectives, interpretations, and beliefs about sexuality and gender. For instance, within Christianity, perspectives on sexuality and gender vary greatly. Some groups, such as the Evangelical Church, may have more conservative views, while others, like the United Church of Christ, are more progressive and inclusive towards the LGBTQIA community. Similarly, within Islam, there are differing views on homosexuality. Some Muslims interpret the Quran as condemning homosexuality, while others argue that the Quran does not explicitly address the subject. And in Hinduism, ancient texts like the Kama Sutra openly discuss and celebrate sexual diversity, even though homosexuality is frowned upon in many contemporary Hindu societies. These examples illustrate that within one religion there can be a wide array of beliefs and attitudes towards sexuality and gender. This diversity is often influenced by various factors such as cultural context, personal experiences, and interpretations of religious texts. Consider Judaism, where interpretations of the Torah can range from outright rejection of homosexuality in Orthodox communities, to full acceptance and inclusion in Reform or Reconstructionist synagogues. And let's not forget Buddhism, where, despite the historical Buddha's insistence on celibacy for monks and nuns, Many Buddhist laypersons are accepting and supportive of diverse sexual orientations and gender identities. The key takeaway here is that religion is not a one-size-fits-all system. Just as individuals are unique, so too are their beliefs and interpretations of their respective faiths. It's critical to remember that people, not religions, interpret texts and make decisions about acceptance and exclusion. So, whether you're a believer, a skeptic, or somewhere in between, remember that religious perspectives on sexuality and gender are far from uniform. They are as diverse as the people who practice these faiths. Even within a single religion, perspectives on sexuality and gender can vary greatly. Welcome to The Awakening, Black Women United. I am your host, Sherry Donnie. 
Subscribe, like, share, comment, and hit the notification bell so you know every time I upload a video. Let's talk about religion and sexual suppression. God doesn't want you to get laid. Why? God imposed patriarchy and marriage on women called their children bastards, and did not allow women to have as many sex partners as they wished. How can we foster a more inclusive dialogue about religion and sexuality? It's a question that's been asked time and time again, and the answer isn't simple. It requires us to step outside of our comfort zones, to challenge long-held beliefs, and to engage in meaningful conversations, even when they're difficult. One of the first steps towards fostering this inclusive dialogue is education. We need to promote understanding and acceptance of different sexual orientations and gender identities within religious communities. This can be achieved through workshops, seminars, and even informal discussions. It's about creating a safe space where people can ask questions, express their thoughts, and gain a deeper understanding of the experiences of others. But education alone isn't enough. We also need to actively challenge the stereotypes and misconceptions that exist within our religious communities. It's not enough to simply accept that these views exist. We need to question them, to challenge them, and to replace them with more inclusive and accepting beliefs. This might involve difficult conversations, but they are necessary for progress. We also need to highlight and celebrate the diversity that exists within our religious communities. Too often we focus on our differences, but there's so much that unites us. We all seek connection, understanding, and acceptance. By celebrating our shared experiences and values, we can create a more inclusive and accepting community. Finally, we need to ensure that our religious leaders are part of this dialogue. They play a crucial role in shaping our beliefs and values, and their support can be instrumental in promoting acceptance and understanding within our communities. By engaging them in these conversations, we can help to ensure that they are leading with love, acceptance, and understanding. It's a long journey, and it won't always be easy, but it's a journey that we need to take together. Because at the end of the day, we're all just trying to navigate this complex world, to understand ourselves and each other, and to find a place where we feel seen, heard, and accepted. An open and inclusive dialogue about religion and sexuality can help to bridge the gap between these two important aspects of many people's lives. And that, my friends, is a bridge worth building. This has been The Awakening. Black Women United, I'm your host, Sherry Danny. Subscribe, like, share, comment, and hit the notification bell so you know every time I upload a video. Let's talk about religion and sexual suppression. God doesn't want you to get laid. Why? God imposed patriarchy and marriage on women called their children bastards and did not allow women to have as many sex partners as they wished. 